what's going on guys, Nate here with Hoda Racing Co. coming at you with another video. And in this episode, we're going to be installing a new air dam here. So this is the Xenon 83-86 Mustang front fascia. You can order it. Um, it goes for like just over 300 I got this as a Christmas present. My mom actually got it for me. So shout out to mom for helping out with the race car build. That's sick. But this is something I've always wanted to do for this car. I always like the look with the front balance and everything. So... It's finally time for us to do that to this car. Um, the instructions from Xenon are pretty like clean cut and dry. So what they want you to do, they give you this giant roll of double-sided sticky tape. It's not even 3M, but whatever. They give you four little screws. And basically what they want you to do is you put a whole line of tape around the whole perimeter of the valance, and then you use these small screws on the backside with the fender extensions to mount it in place. Which is fine for like a, a car that just gets cruised around town and whatnot. However, for a car that's capable of 140 plus miles an hour, I definitely want that balance to stay on the front bumper. So what we're probably gonna end up doing is having the, the small screws on the backside to the fender extensions, like Xenon says. And obviously we'll have our double-sided taper along the edge, like we're supposed to. But we're probably gonna also have some kind of mounting hardware along the perimeter of the balance to help hold it and attach it to the front bumper. That way we have a nice strong mounting point and I don't have to worry about this thing coming off because if it comes off, I'm gonna be really upset about it. So, yeah, we got a lot to do. Um, I need to pull the Mach 1 front lip off. That's the last time it's ever gonna be on this car. It's lived a long, good life. It looks good on the car, but uh, it's finally time to upgrade and get into something else. So I'll probably be ditching the front lip and then I'm probably gonna end up cutting away the front section of the front bumper. Now. Something to note, you can install um, this front balance over the stock front bumper, which I'll show that picture here. As you can see, it fits and it fits all right, but you can still see the front bumper behind the balance, and it just makes it look really confused and cluttered up, and I just don't like that look. So to make things easier and simple, we'll just cut away that section of the front bumper, and we'll get this installed and whatnot. So the first thing I need to do is pull that front lip off and then we can start hitting this thing with a heat gun and straightening this thing out from shipping. So less talking, let's get into it. All right, so as you can see, the front lip is removed. It's looking a little naked here. <laughs> it's all right. So now we're gonna start heating this thing up and trying to straighten it out and uh, start seeing about test fitting it. So I got the front balance on here. I just got three screws kind of holding it as like a mock-up. Man, oh man, if you guys have ever seen the original Mad Max movies with the Interceptor, uh-huh, I'm going to show you. Yeah, it really did something to the look of the car, and I don't, I don't know what exactly it's doing, but it's doing something. It looks like a Celine, honestly, the way the front balance looks and fits on the car, like, that's hard. I really like that. It really kind of cleans up the front end of the car. And it's got that Mad Max style front end now. I don't know, that's hard, man. Man, I can't wait to get this thing painted. It's gonna look so good on the car, if, like, once it's done. So I guess the only thing really left is to map out the front bumper and like what we need to cut out behind it because <clears throat> like I said you'll be able to kind of see the original bumper behind it and I'm just not really big on that well I don't know I guess on this one you can't really see I don't know I'm probably gonna play around with it and see what I can come up with but first impressions this thing looks good I really I wanted to see it you know loaded up and like on suspension and wow I like it this has been a look I've always wanted to do with this car, and man, that looks so good. So yeah, let me come up with some ideas on what to do with the front bumper underneath, and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, so as you can see, the car's been shuffled around a little bit, and I'm going to explain why. So as you guys seen in the last clip, we got the front balance kind of mocked up here. So the goal for this, because I'm so tired of painting, is my buddy Ario is actually going to hook me up. I'm going to take him the front balance and buy the paint and everything. And he's going to respray it for me with his paint gun and whatnot. So it's a top-notch quality job in the middle of winter, which will be sweet. So 
I guess this is basically just gonna be the mock-up of the front balance, but you guys can get a pretty good idea of how it's gonna look. I think it looks killer. So, I got extremely lucky last week. I was able to go out to a junkyard that's about an hour away from me, and I found a whole nother complete set of interior plastics. So, as you can see, this panel is from my car, and it's got a lot of sun damage on it. It's, got, it's really baked in a lot of areas. And these panels are just, they're super hard to come by. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to save them. So I ended up scoring this set. I have doubles of everything I need now. So as you can see, this is the replacement driver's side panel I got. It's got a little bit of sun bleach, but it's not bad at all. Um, there was some kind of like spillage that happened. So there's a lot of like fade spots in it. I don't know, it like reacted with the plastic. But I scrubbed them all down and cleaned them all up. So you can see this one's in pretty good shape and you can see how roached mine is. It's not like horrible, right? But like there's like chunks of plastic that are missing just from where it got sun bleached. So being able to find another complete set of interior plastics at the junkyard, super phenomenal. I grabbed everything that I could think of. I wasn't trying to be greedy because I know there's other people that need parts like this, right? But, um, I needed all the back stuff, essentially. So I got the big quarter panel sections. I have got the tail light panels. I got the little bottom kick panels by the doors, the little shock tower covers. I got my speaker grills that I need to retouch up. They're still blue and they're, they're not sun bleached or nothing. They're just faded in a couple spots. So if I can clean these up and respray them, it'll be dope. So the goal is to pull the car in the driveway, lock it up, close the door, fire up the turbo heater and, uh, start cleaning everything up and getting ready for paint. I also have a trunk mat here. Now this thing is disgusting, right? It's OG carpet from a Fox body. Y'all know how nasty these things get. However, mine had a lot of holes and stuff in it from over the years of being used as a workbench and whatnot. So this one appears to be in really good shape. It's just really dirty. So I'm hoping that I can scrub it down and vacuum it and steam clean it and possibly be able to bring it back. And if I can, that'll save me a hundred bucks or so on trunk carpet. I also have, you can see these little clips here for the seat belts where it kind of like covers the hole. I have replacements for that that I got from NPD a while back and they're molded in black. So if I can paint these and get all the plastics redone, I'll have a pretty nice interior, which will be dope because as you can see, it's still bare bones back here. I did make a new spare tire cover out of a piece of plywood that I got. Um, I think it was like 17 bucks and then I just spray painted it brown. So it wouldn't like, if I spilled something on it, it wouldn't absorb into the wood. Right. And then I screwed little rubber feet on. So it'd kind of hold itself aligned in the trunk. And then I threw an old, uh, label on it that I picked up from NPD. So it, it looks official, you know, but with all the sound deadening and everything and having the full interior in, I'm hoping it comes out really nice and looks good. I do also, I'll show you what we'll be using. Um, so I have Regatta Blue Interior Paint that I got from LMR. I got two cans. So I'm mainly right now concerned about the big quarter panel sections. So if I have extra, I'll definitely be painting other parts as well. But those are the main concern right now. And then I can always order more paint and do the rest. And then I also have a fire extinguisher mount that I'll be installing. It just band clamps to the uh, harness bar I have. Because right now, a uh, bicycle water bottle holder and a bungee cord just... Oh, it's locked. It just don't really do the part. You know what I mean? It holds it like it hasn't fallen out. Don't get me wrong, but I'd like to have something a little more official looking than that. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the game plan for this weekend is to try and get the interior mostly done and uh, see what we get. So, like I said, I'm going to get this pulled out of here, fire up the heater, and we'll get right into it. Fire. So you're probably wondering why this thing's sitting up on wood in a drain pan and it's a funny story So essentially this is actually my buddy Cody's heater and there's always been a small hole in the bottom of the tank So I don't know why I didn't do this before but you'd put kerosene in it and fire it up and it, it works It works great. However, it likes to flood half the garage every time you use it. So Now I'm just gonna catch everything 
and it'll be mess free and then I can just pour it back in and keep burning it so it's great it's I'm not wasting kerosene anymore but let's get on to it all right so just so you guys are aware so that's our old panel there here's our new one that we're gonna be using and like I already stated it's in a lot better condition overall the only like drawback is that somebody blasted a hole in it for like some wire I mean they could have totally ran it better but you know what do I know so before you start getting into something like this one thing I will say is if you got areas that do have a lot of sun fade like panels like this usually get in here where the hatch kind of the glass kind of magnifies on it and then here on the windowsill right you can kind of see up here is good that the sill is okay but the actual edge of it was getting a little nuked so what I like to do is kind of wave a torch over it don't get too close don't let it sit in one spot for too long because you will melt and deform the plastic but what it does is it re kind of remelts the plastic and it doesn't make it so delicate and fragile anymore it kind of helps rebond itself back into like regular plastic so either way you're not really gonna be able to see it once it's painted and whatnot but if you're worried about you know these things being as delicate i mean these things are almost 40 years old right you want to take caution with them when you're painting them when you're redoing them when you're reinstalling them so i just wanted to state that real quick i've been over here shaking the hell out of this can so I'll, we're about to see if lmr got that dog in them or, or not i think they do they've came through before so i'm gonna keep shaking the hell out of this and uh let you know how it goes <laughs> all right so we are two coats in I still got a little bit left in this can. Man, Alomar, you guys don't miss, dude. This paint is spot on. You can't even tell. It took me a minute to realize, like, there's fresh paint being applied, dude. It's so good. These panels came out great. I got the little shot cover painted. I got the speaker grill painted. I got the little bottom kick plate in. I got the little seat belt collar piece. It's all sprayed it's all good i'm gonna let this sit in front of the heater and bake for a minute and then i'll probably scoot everything up out of the way let it keep drying for a little bit and then uh start getting onto the other side dude this paint it's crazy watch i got i gotta show you guys this like the color match is so spot on so like you can see like this spot's pretty faded right Can's doing doing funny things right now because it's getting low, but that's so spot on, dude. LMR, you guys are sick. This is crispy. So yeah, driver's side pieces came out good. Um, probably won't have enough to do the back panels and whatnot, but the meat of it's done, which is phenomenal. I can start getting interior back in this thing. It's not, it's not hard to put the back panels in. I'm gonna try and have enough so I can respray re these scuff plates here. So I actually, these are original blue ones from the car that the junkyard that I got. And then I have, I had another set that's somewhere around here, but they're gray. And that's what used to be in the car because my original blue ones were so deteriorated and like broken. But yeah, so, uh, I'm just basically picking the best out of the pile and reusing what I have. And whatever I have left over, I'll probably sell if somebody else wants it for their car. I'm not going to attempt to try to save my original pieces here. The ones I got look phenomenal. Like, look at this, dude. This paint is so spot on. You can't see one lick of sun fade. Like, everything came out flawless. And it dries really fast with how cold it is, even though I got the heater on right now, right? I don't know who makes this, like what kind of paint this is, whatever, but it's good stuff. So if you're going to redo the plastics on your Fox body, LMR, just get their paint instead of sitting there trying to outsource a color match. Or if you can find one, you know, good on you, whatever. But LMR just proved yet again why their name's up there in the Fox body world. So, uh, yeah. Let me keep going on and let you guys know what happens. Real quick, another thing I want to cover is basically the sound system for the car. So 
I've had a different hodgepodge of things and different setups over the years. Um, right now, our plan is to upgrade the rear speakers. So these are some old doo-doo Panasonics that I've had in the car for the past couple years. They work. They're not the best. They're not the worst. Um, but we are upgrading. So my good buddy Xavier, good dude, known him for years. He's very big in the uh, car audio world. And he really knows how to like... I don't know, fine tune and go off the customer's wants and needs, right? So he knows I'm not like a big loud system kind of guy. I like more like just, you know, sound quality because I kind of listen to everything. I don't really have a, I guess, a genre. I guess I'm, I'm really certain on. So he made a good recommendation for these Alpine type uh, S's. And he said they should work great for the Mustang. So I'm hoping with the fresh interior bits and all the sound ending and everything, these will sound really good in the car. Um, I do have Kenwood Exelon three and a half inch speakers that he also recommended in the dash. And driving the car for the month with just dash speakers, like the speakers sound good, but because it's like an empty void behind the dash, you kind of lose some of that sound, right? Because there's no like, there's no cups under the speaker to kind of help just propel the sound out of the dash at all. Some of it gets wish washed behind the dash and you can kind of hear that. So I might try and figure something out about that in the future. But one thing for sure is having these speakers in the rear and then also having the fader more oriented towards the rear off the head unit should give us a nice sound quality that'll kind of fill up the vehicle. It's not, I'm not going to be able to really hear some of the audio getting lost in the dash. So that's, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. I'm not sure if that's scientifically accurate, but that's my theory. But either way, thank you, Xavier, for the great recommendations for the audio for the car. And uh, yeah, so like I said, I just wanted to cover that. So we'll definitely be getting new speakers in the car. I do have the driver's side pieces sitting over here. Now, I was correct in assuming that I'm only going to have enough to do the quarter panel pieces. I don't have enough paint to do the rears, which kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. I'll have to order more. So the plan is to... These are flash dried. I was able to kind of touch them and move them. I didn't like grab them hard or nothing, but I got them sitting over here so I can leave them overnight undisturbed to finish curing. I got our old pieces sitting over here. So whoever needs them or wants them can have them. And the plan is to start cleaning up these panels because they're super nasty and all the other little bits have got to get cleaned up. And one thing you should do after you clean everything is you can use denatured alcohol, which I'd be... I'd be cautious with because I don't know how it's going to react to these panels. Um, try that at your own risk. Another thing you can do if you're using like Armor All, Chemical Guys products, whatever you're using to clean these, you can do this at your own risk too. This is what I did is I would take the torch, don't get close, just kind of hover over the panel and, you know, go back and forth and it'll kind of evaporate that moisture barrier that's trapped on the panel. And it came out fine. Like that's what I did here. And there's no like weird texture issues happening so it works fine try that at your own risk because you can risk damaging the panel that way but uh that's just what i did so once we get these panels cleaned up and painted i want to move on to trying to clean this carpet now again it's really nasty i can't stress that enough but hopefully scrubbing steam cleaning vacuuming just cleaning the devil out of it because it needs it but if we can save this, again, it's going to save me some money in having to buy a new trunk carpet because mine had a couple holes in it and whatnot, unfortunately. So it is what it is. But that's the game plan for tonight. And then tomorrow we'll get the car in here and start installing everything. So I'll keep you guys posted. All righty. So we got all our pieces done. Going to let them dry for the night and they'll be ready to go in the car tomorrow. Time to start tackling that thing. Disgusting.
extraction didn't go too bad. It's already looking a million times better than it did. She was definitely nasty though. So I'm gonna go fill this thing back up and uh, we'll go for round two. All right guys, so I did do the second half of the extraction on that trunk carpet, but I didn't really pull much else out of it as far as like dirt and grime. It, it seemed like the first go around really got like the brunt of it. So when I got done, it was already like four o'clock in the morning and I just wanted to go to bed. So I just got done doing what I was doing and then took the mat with me inside and I put it in the basement by the furnace so it could dry overnight. And then woke up today at like three and then me and my buddy Alex, he came over and gave me a hand putting all this stuff in. So shout out to Alex. Couldn't do it without you. So I'll show you the interior here. A little motorsport keychain. Dude, there we go. Didn't want to go in for a second. Bam! Looking pretty good. So, as you can see, we got all the quarter plastics in, the shock tower covers, speaker grills. Got our new Alpine Type S speakers in the back. And then I had some extra little blue push pins that I got out of like a, I think it was like an F 150 or a Ranger or something at the junkyard. Don't be afraid to pillage other vehicles at the yard for parts you need. You'll get lucky sometimes. Like, I'm pretty sure I found these grills that were originally the right color. I think they were on like, the back doors of like an e350 or something like that like sometimes you just you just kind of outsource a little bit so yeah this all came out really nice i could have swore i painted the shock tower cover for this side but apparently i didn't so i have to pick one out of the pile or maybe just order a new one from lmr because they all get sun bleached and uh paint that and then i still need to paint the inner trunk panels here and you can see i got them chilling on the shelf over there but everything came out great like our back little trim plate, the metal piece that goes there is all good. The little door sill plates that go up top that snap in. It all came out really nice. Even the little clips for the little seat belts that I was missing, those came out good. Got the little, the lower kick panel in, the little scuff plate here. It all just ties together really nice. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Um, I found these floor mats in a Mercury Comet or yeah mercury comet at the uh one of the junkyards i went to they were doing like that 60 for 60 sale and i got a bunch of other stuff but i found these floor mats and i think they're more like a, a wedgewood blue they kind of seem to match the recaros a little more but they're close enough to the new carpet that we have and they cleaned up really nice so i was like whatever i'll, I'll use them whatever so i got the rears and the front you can't really see it in there but yeah it all came out really nice. The headliner's not perfect. It's got a couple small spots where it's going to start sagging. And I'm sure years from now, I'm going to be mad at myself that I didn't just do the headliner now. But it's like $300 for a headliner. I ain't paying for that. So I'll just let this headliner keep living its life. It'll be fine. I also got my Amazon fire extinguisher mount on instead of the bicycle water bottle holder that I had. Um, I do need to get hose clamps for it because the ones that the supplier gave me with the fire extinguisher mount, they didn't fit the harness bar. Like the diameter was too small for the clamps that they gave me. So I'll have to get some hose clamps so I can fasten that to it because I don't want that uh, fire extinguisher swinging around on the harness bar while I'm driving. I want it to be like solidly mounted. But other than that, it all came out really nice. So the next video probably be me fish finishing up the plastics in the trunk. Um, I have been looking at the Scott Rods panel to go here. Maybe I can paint that the same blue. It's like an aluminum plate and you rivet it in. Maybe I can paint that blue as well. I don't know. I don't know. I got some ideas I've been rolling around with, but, uh, yeah, definitely next video we'll get all that complete. I'm hoping, uh, me and my buddy Ario can get together soon and I can take this valance off and bring it to him and get that painted. And then I do still need to get like the door moldings and whatnot, but... I mean, all the big stuff's done. Like, it's mainly just little stuff now. I do need to get new front tires. I got Cooper Cobras in the back. They're 255 6015s. And then I got 225 6015s in the front. And I had a um, good buddy of mine. His name's Clint. He's got his own shop he runs. He had a couple old front runners that he wasn't using sitting on the shelf. And he actually ended up giving to me, which is super cool. But was it last year? 
I went to Oscoto with my buddy. We went up north and, yeah, Futura GLSs. And the passenger front ended up getting a shifted belt on the trip. So I had to get that changed out and they had a tire for me and threw that on. So I'm a big fan of white letters. So I'll probably uh, just get some Cooper covers for the fronts or something. I am looking at new wheels too. So if you guys remember when I first started kind of getting stuff put back together, I had those Koenig Rewinds that I had gotten for the car and they looked really good, but I'm not a big fan of using adapters, especially on a car that I plan on beating on, right? I don't want to lose a wheel. I did all this work restoring all this stuff. I don't want to crunch a fender, nothing like that. So I ended up just selling them. I'm looking at uh, some new wheels now. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but if I do end up pulling the trigger and getting them, they're going to be pretty baller and I'll probably just pull the rears off and put them on those and then get new fronts for those. I don't know. I got, there's a couple ways I can go about it, but nonetheless, we got a lot done in this video and I appreciate you guys for tuning in and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Peace.